Hi, eighth graders. This is Mr. Bernard coming at you today with information that you're going to need for your Pearl Lab. Videoing for me today and helping me out with setting everything up is Miss Mann. Hi, Miss Mann. Say hi. Say hi, Miss Mann. Hi, Miss Mann. Okay. So um, before we go any further, you should have already read Chapter Three, Lesson One in your books. You are going to need to go through all the things that we assigned. Um, for your at homework so that you understand how to make the measurements that we are going to be showing and demonstrating for you today Okay, but we're not going to tell you exactly what their values are because you are going to have to make those measurements yourself through the video All right, so uh, let's go ahead and we're going to pan over here this This table should already be in your notes as a part of the write-up for this lab okay now it has got a few things that we are going to measure but it's also got some things that you're going to have to calculate some things that are going to be measured is going to be the volume of 20 pearls and the volume of our container okay the mass of 20 pearls we've gotten a mass of container and pearls already given for us so we've already made that measurement and included it and then we're going to need a mass of empty container, okay? The other things are going to be calculations that you do. The whole point of this lab, remember, is to determine how many pearls are inside of this box right here. Here's our wonderful box. This is like those guess the number of M&Ms challenges you always see and then you get to win a prize, okay? So the whole point of this is we're going to be testing two different methods that we're using um, to estimate this number of pearls. One is going to be a by volume estimate and one is going to be a by mass estimate. And then we're going to determine which one is the better estimation method for this situation. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start over here. And we're going to start with our by mass estimation. Let's get a, a view of our measuring devices. Fantastic. Okay. So we have two different things set up right now inside. If we want to go ahead and look inside of here, you'll see we have 20 pearls inside one of these little cups. Okay. I got to use the cups because otherwise the pearls go everywhere and it's a big mess and we can't measure anything. And unfortunately it just doesn't work. Why are we using 20? Because if we use a bunch of them, then we get a nice average, just in case there may be some slight variations in uniformity of the pearls. They're pretty uniform, but we could actually have some subtle problems, um, just slight imperfections. So by doing it this way, we get an average. Not only that, but if you were to look at our actual measuring device, our triple beam balance, it actually doesn't go low enough so that we, we can accurately measure one pearl by itself but it, we can measure 20 pearls and then we can basically divide by 20 to find out the value of a single. So here's our measurement that Miss Mann is recording for us right now. Make sure you know how to read a triple beam bounce, review your lesson if you do not know how. It's in the book, I promise you that. The problem that we have though is that this situation is the mass of both pearls and the cup okay in other words we got one of these little things that we are measuring but we do not care about so what we got to do over here is we've got to also measure the mass of just an empty cup we've got a nice empty cup right here and we're going to measure the mass of that so this man's going to get a good reading on that for you guys to be able to measure it at home and get the number through your own work Fantastic. Now, what the other thing that we need to know, we were given the mass of the container and pearls, okay? The mass of the container and pearls is this giant thing right here. But the same problem with the cup situation that we had before exists right here. We've got all this extra plastic that is made up of the container itself. So we don't care about the mass of this container and we want to get rid of it. So when we measure this, this is our container and pearls. This right here is what weighs 790 grams. So we want to get rid of 
that plastic that's on the outside. So let's measure that plastic. I've got a empty container, which is identical to the one before. Okay, you've probably seen these before in a bunch of your other science classes. We like these containers a lot. We're gonna go ahead and we are just going to start our digital scale. Luckily for us, this is gonna do all the measuring for us and it's gonna be nice and easy. There's your value. It is in the unit of grams. So all of our units are consistent in this situation. Loving that. That takes care of all of our mass related measurements that we need to do, okay? Now the rest of the mass stuff is purely calculation. Moving on to the volume things. We need to know the volume of 20 pearls and we also need to know the volume of the container. Remember, this is our container right here. To find this volume, we're gonna need its dimensions. So the dimensions of this container are 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's the length, the width, and the height. Find out exactly what that volume is. We're also going to need to know the volume of some pearls, okay? Specifically, the volume of 20 pearls. We're gonna start right here. This is an empty graduated cylinder that has no pearls in it. You need to measure exactly how much. Remember, review your chapter three lesson one information on how to read a graduated cylinder. Fantastic. Going back out a little. It's okay. So what I've got over here is a container that is now full of pearls. They both had the same starting water level. So since they had the same starting water level, any change should be from our pearls by themselves. There's 20 pearls in here. So go ahead and read exactly how much we have in terms of a volume on that. Fantastic. I think that takes care of just about everything you need for this lab. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Mann or myself. Send us an email. We will gladly clear anything up for you that you need cleared up. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks, Ms. Mann.